Hi everyone, I'm Arun Santosh, Senior Solution Architect with QuickSight. A common question I get from customers is how can QuickSight pull in data that's residing in another AWS account? Today I'll show you how to do this using VPC peering. On my screen, I have two AWS accounts open in two separate browser sessions. The left hand side I will use as my source. I'll be creating an RDS instance in it. And in the right hand side, I'll set up my QuickSight instance. Then I'll show you how I connect to the RDS instance across account and pull the data. So let's jump right in. On the source account, I'll search for VPC from services and bring up the VPC console. Clicking into your VPCs, I'll choose to create a new VPC. I'll give it a name. I'll just call this account one VPC. And I'll choose for the cider block 10.1.0.0 slash 16. With that, I'll choose to create the VPC. Now on the target side account, I'll bring up VPC console there. And again, getting into your VPCs, choose to create a new VPC. I'll call this account to VPC. And for cider block, I'll go with 10.2.0.0 slash 16, so that my IP ranges don't clash. I create it. Now from VPC peering connections, I create a new peering connection. I'll call this VPC connection to account one. And for the requester, I select the new custom VPC I created. And I choose my source account as the account to connect to. Copy the account number from there and paste it into the account ID field. I'm going to do this in the same region so that can be left as is. And for the VPC ID acceptor, I copy the VPC ID from my source account and paste that into this box. With that, I'll choose to create a peering connection. It says that the connection request is successful and it's in pending acceptance state. So coming on to the source side, I go into pairing connections and I see that connection request pending my acceptance. I choose to accept it here. And it shows up as active immediately. I refresh it on my target account and the connection state has changed to active there as well. Next, let's create subnets on the source account. The RDS instance will need at minimum two subnets. So let's create two here. Click on create subnet from the subnet console. And I'll choose the custom VPC, account one VPC. For the subnet name, I'm going to type in account one hyphen subnet one. And for the setup block, I will go with 10.1.0.0 slash 20. And that should give me a block of 4096 IP addresses. So with that, I'll click create subnet. I'll choose to create one more here and select the same custom VPC and subnet name this time I'll choose account 1 hyphen subnet 2 choose the availability zone as central 1B and for IP range 10.1.16.0 slash 20 starting with the very next block of 4096 addresses 
scroll down and create submit. I'll repeat the same steps on the target side. So clicking in the submit sphere, create subnet, choose account 2 VPC, submit name account 2 hyphen submit 1. And for the cider block, I'll go with 10.2.0.0 slash 20 and create the subnet. I'll create one more here as well and choose account 2 VPC, name is account 2 hyphen subnet 2. For availability zone, I pick central 1B and then 10.2.16.0 slash 20 and create subnet. Now on the source side, I'll click into routing tables and choose the routing table for the new VPC that we created and edit the routes. Choose to add a new route there. For 10.2.0.0 slash 16, we want to select the peering connection that we established and save the changes. Likewise, on the target side, we will go into route tables, select the route table for the VPC and edit route, add route. And for 10.1.0.0 slash 16, we will ask to be routed through the pairing connection and save changes. Now again on the source side, let's click on your VPCs and select our VPC and from actions go into edit DNS host names and enable it. And save. Likewise on the target side. From actions we go into enable DNS host names, enable and save. This is so that the RDS host names can be resolved by QuickSight. Let's open a new console on the source side and therein I will bring up EC2 console and from left panel bring up the security groups choose to create a new security group and this is the one which I will associate with Aurora so I will call it Aurora SG put the same thing under description and choose to be associated with my new VPC delete the outbound rules and for the inbound I will choose to allow traffic on MySQL Aurora port that's 3306 and right now I do not have the kickside security group set up yet so I will associate this with my default security group just for now and click create console in a new tab and search for RDS and launch RDS console from there, I choose to create a new database and I'll go with Aurora, the serverless option, and choose MySQL. Change the database name to dev, give an admin password, inform the password. and then scroll down, change it to be under the new VPC I created. Under additional configuration, before that under security groups, I select Aurora SG, the security group which I created in prior step. And then under additional configuration, I give the database name as devdb and create the database. Now 
now on the target side I open a new tab and I will search for QuickSite I already have QuickSite set up on this account so I'll just open up the QuickSite console from here I'll open up one more tab go to console and bring up EC2 search for EC2 so I could go create the security group to be used with QuickSight from left panel click on security groups and choose to create a new one I'll call this my QuickSight SG put the same under description and choose to associate it with the new VPC that was created as before I deleted the outbound rules and for inbound I will allow all traffic that's because the ports that the databases respond back on that could vary depending on the database now I copy the account number from my source account and I'll paste that into a notepad I'll also go grab the Aurora SG security group ID and I'll use that combination. This is my account one, Aurora account number as well as security group. So that combination is what I will put into the source field here in my security inbound rule and add that as a rule. Likewise, from my target account, I'll grab the account number Paste that into my notepad as account to QuickSight and then I have to go get the security group so for that first create it get the security group ID that was created for QuickSight and paste that in here in this combination of account number and security group ID is what I can use on my inbound rule on source side remember I had put in the default SG before I delete that now and instead I paste in the target account and QuickSight security group therein so allowing inbound traffic from QuickSight and likewise for QuickSight I am allowing all traffic from Aurora security group now shifting to QuickSight panel we'll go into management panel there manage VPC connections and choose to add a new VPC. I'll call this connection to account two's VPC and choose the new VPC I had created in account two. Choose one of the subnets and I will put in the security group which I created in this account for QuickSight. So that's the QuickSight SGI associated there. Now I can try to create a new data set. I'll choose Aurora from this list. And for name, I will call this connection to Aurora MySQL on account 1. Choose my VPC connection. And database type is MySQL. I'll go get the endpoint from my source account paste that in and as port it's 3306 confirm port on the source account that's matching the database name I can find from configuration I had used it as dev db so copy that over and paste it under database name and username for now I will stick with the admin user and password With that, I will try validating and I should get an error. And of course, I get the error that the VPC connection is not ready for use yet. It takes few minutes to stabilize. So I'll pause this video, come back and try this. Now I'll try this again. And you can see that the connection validated properly now. 
let's now make sure that this is really going in via the security group configuration that we did over VPC peering. So we will go into the Aurora security group and we'll just change that allowed port. Let's change it from MySQL to SSH port maybe. And save that. Then we will try to validate this again. And you will see that it's just waiting on that step. That's because network traffic is not able to get through. So let's go back and shift this back to MySQL in the inbound rules on Aurora side. Save that. And in few seconds, we should see this connection being validated again. This concludes my demo on how you can use VPC peering to allow QuickSight to access data in other AWS accounts. Hope this was a good use of your time. Have a great day ahead.